Hello there, Robert Bailey on Facebook asked if it's possible to imitate this kind of thing using motion. <clears throat> this is called Lithograph by somebody by the name of, I hope they'll pronounce this right, Izalakihus, possibly, but um, they've got this piece here called Lithograph that kind of looks like a book. Uh, let me just turn this down a bit so I don't deafen you. So this is the effect we're going for. So basically, yeah, uh, an, an animated, an animated book. So I'm going to rattle through this really quickly. The kids are in, so you might hear some background noise. Somebody even might come in. Um, so I'll quickly try and fudge this together so that you can get the oh, Vimeo's auto playing. Um, so that you can get the gist of what we do. Here we go. I'm going to load up motion. So, blank canvas. I'm going to import a texture I found online. White paper texture with flex. This was courtesy of freecreatives.com for the purposes of this exercise. Um, I hope I'm allowed to use it for this <laughs> purpose. Fingers crossed. So scale, I'm just going to set to 100% and I'm going to add a camera and move back away from our so it's 3D and move away from our object there. I'm going to flip it round 90 degrees so that it looks like, oops, that's the position, excuse me. I'm going to flip it round 90 degrees on the z-axis to make it look more like a book. Now it's going to be a 2D uh, group within a 3D group, which means that when I move the camera, we'll still be able to move around it. But the actual thing I'm playing with will be 2D. So I'll show you. How that all works. Let's just put everything to zero. Group at zero, the paper at zero, that group at zero. I'll just label that page so that we can tell and I'll label this book. And I'll put make sure everything is at zero in the z-axis. It's just dead center and any movement around it I'll do with the camera. Let's reset the rotation and just move the camera away from our page. So there's our texture. I'm going to give it the illusion that there's a bit of a fold in the corner of the book. This is going to be the right hand page and I'll copy it soon to make a left hand page. But for now, let's make a rectangle and draw over our paper. So this rectangle, I'm going to go to fill gradient. We go down here, adjust item, and have a gradient from one side to the other. Just look in there and seeing that it's not quite lined up. So just zero, zero, zero. There we go. Go to our shape. Geometry, and I'll just sort of make that line up. That looks pretty close. I'm going to go to the style on the shape, and this is just going to be grey. And then the other side, also grey. Slightly lighter. I'm going to put another grey in there. So actually, far left is going to be quite dark. That end is going to be a lot paler. So can you see the illusion of that could almost be on the left hand side there, that could almost be sort of the the inside, sort of the part where the, the page would come out of the spine and curve away. So at the top of the gradient, um, there so this top part is our transparency so it's going to be 
really quite transparent over that side. Oops, click, click. We're hoping that the page texture will begin to be visible underneath that. Oh, oh a right click. Well, fair is better, sorry. So on the far right, we'll put the opacity down there. I could do it up here as well, couldn't I? I could do it on this slider by selecting it. So not only am I managing to sort of darken the page slightly in places, but it means we've got control. Can you see? So it's a lot darker there. So when we start moving the camera around it, because the page, the view, our view of the page is going to be quite close up. I'm hoping it just sells the idea that there is a fold towards that corner. So just play around until you're happy that there looks like there's a bit of shading on there. So I'm darkening the colour, playing with the transparency a bit. There. So that's our page. We reset the camera on the rotation at least. Pull back away from our book. Here we go. There's one page. So we're actually going to rename this page, our page, right page. So our page. We're going to duplicate that, rename that left page. And I'm going to flip that over to by 190 degrees. Oops. Oh yeah. Why is that not lined up perfectly then? Oh, there we go, 180. Why am I saying 190? I'm losing my mind. And we pop it over to that side. So there's the basic look of our book. So we need some text to go in our book. I've gone to lipsum.com, which has got a copy of the Lorem Ipsum dummy text that you see everywhere when people need dummy text. Uh, when they're designing magazines or whatnot. Um, apparently it's from Definibus Bonorum et Malorum, written by Cicero, if that's how you pronounce it, in 45 BC. If only that man would have known the amazing things we we're doing with it today. So I've just command C to copy that, go to my right hand page. You don't want to just click and then copy it in there because it'll just do it in one big line. This is something that for some reason has never come up with me and I've just realized it now. You wanna wrap the text, so click your text icon and then click drag and it'll allow you to draw your box in which the text will appear. We're gonna copy that into there. We're going to make the text a little bit bigger. I'm gonna make it black. And by default, um, this happens to have appeared in the font Typical Writer, which looks quite good. It looks like text in a book. You might have to faff around and get yourself the right font that you're happy with. I'm going to just duplicate that layer, bring it down. Way not across, down. Um, I'm going to highlight the pair of them and we'll put them on the left page. Now this is going to end up being upside down, I've just realised, because we of course flipped the left page around 180 degrees. So if I just go there, spin it, where has it gone? Ah, it's got to be at zero on the z-axis. Flip it. Same one there, yep. Yeah, it's um, keep checking that you're putting things at zero on the z axis, otherwise, you'll get all kinds of strange results. Okay, so on the right hand page, we're gonna just have a little zoom in. 
we are going to write something in the middle is that come up in the same font yep slightly bigger and we will write this is our book hope you like it don't know why don't care doesn't really mean anything um appearance we'll make it black again and we'll make that text bigger so it stands out and there we go so we'll have that about a second in press i so that it just appears there and then on that same frame we go to library we go to text animation type on apply it so there's our endpoint scroll down so i can just see where that is can you see type on there let's have it a couple of seconds so now this happens there we go now let's make some magic happen we are going to go to the camera and we're going to keyframe the camera so i'm going to hit record there And it doesn't look that convincing at the moment, but you can hide a lot behind depth of field and noise and camera movement and stuff. I'm just going to find a position where I think it looks quite cool. Fiddling, fiddling, fiddling. Now let's add a little bit of special source. Depth of field. Go to our camera settings. The depth of field, and we're going to add loads. I'll turn record mode off that would help i'm going to add loads going to fiddle with the offset so i've narrowed the depth of field effectively to find the exact point where it is in focus and then i'll broaden it slightly by changing the near and far focus and the offset so I'm trying to get it as near over the text as I can, but then I'll lessen the effect. So, yeah. There we go, I quite like that. Now that means, of course, that because the depth of field is set for when the camera's in there, it means that when it's out here, I've got an extra keyframe there that I didn't mean to have. So when it's out there, I'll just reduce that depth of field. Now the position you put the camera in masks a lot here, I think. There we go. I think by being out there we, we're showing we're revealing how fake it really is I'm just gonna get rid of those keyframes we've got these keyframes here that I've just created so play around, get your start and end where you want them to be. I think that's a bit better. So there it goes. I'd like to emphasise that I have not practised or rehearsed this. That's my excuse and I am sticking with it. But, you know, you can tweak until your heart's content, really. Just going to tweak. Tweaking, tweaking. I quite like that. And then I'll just save. Another thing you can do as well. We've got our camera motion there. I'm going to add a little bit of... It's always nice to add a little bit of um, random motion to a camera, I find. So just go to the 
add parameter behavior, randomize. This will be way too much, way too jittery. I used to noisiness straight off, and I always put frequency to 0.5 or 1, somewhere like that. Play. Yeah, that's the basics. Um, I can add a little bit of um, bit of filter. So go to stylize. Um, something like some vignetting would help. Also, I've noticed that there's um, let me just add vignetting to the book. Just darken those edges. So it all helps. So we fact darken it a bit more blur as well. The depth of field has introduced a weird artifact here where the two pages meet. That's something that I would look at if I was doing this for reels. Uh, yeah, seeing what other filters are. I mean, you could really go for it. I mean, sometimes a bit of bad for something like this, a bit of bad film, but really, really sort of subtly. So apply. Let's have a look. Maybe a little bit over the top, but then I could turn the mix down. Um, yeah. So if I do a little RAM preview there as well. And uh, I'll be back in two minutes. There we go. I've done a quick RAM preview. Let's have a little look at our... Uh, let's do it so that it looks... I'll bring that down. All right, let's have a look. There you go, that's the basics on how to do a book type effect. Lots of depth of field carries carries us a heck of a lot, I think. Um, so I hope that's of use to you. Uh, that was unrehearsed, uh, thrown together. I've had to be as quick as possible because the kids are going to be wanting their dinner soon. So I um, hope that's helpful. Thanks for listening. Um, I, where have I gone? I go by the name of Giddy Video when I'm making stuff. Uh, Twitter.com slash Giddy Video. Search for me on Vimeo, YouTube, um, and some Facebook groups dedicated to Final Cut and Apple Motion and stuff like that. Um, catch you soon. Bye.